coming up on this episode of Common Denominator. I'm not ever really put in a position where I'm needing to manage negative emotions. It's more tears of joy at the end of a procedure. Hi, and welcome to Common Denominator, where we shine a light on people striving to make the world a better place. Today, a woman who's helped over 10,000 people heal after trauma. Jody Stosky is a paramedical tattoo artist and the founder of the Paramedical Tattoo Academy and the Cinnamon Girl Clinic. She helps people regain their confidence and joy by camouflaging surgical scars, skin grafts, acne scars, stretch marks, and more. She'll tell us how she got into it, how the process works, and how you or someone you love can benefit. Jody and I just finished our conversation and the thing that really stuck out to me is how much self-confidence people gain after going through the tattoo procedure. Really fascinating. Before we play that chat, a quick reminder that if you like the show, please subscribe and follow me on social media at mpopak. Now, here's my conversation with Jody Stosky. Enjoy. Good morning, Jody, and uh, welcome to Common Denominator. Good morning, Moshe. Thanks for having me. So the first time I heard about paramedical tattooing, it was just like this kind of fascinating concept. And because there's also this emotional kind of trauma that you're also healing uh, your patients as well. So let's go back for a second and tell us what that is. What's a paramedical, I guess, tattoo artist or... You know, and what does that process consist of? Yeah, I think that's still a very common question. It's not as familiar for people who understand the concept of a body tattoo. So let's use that as how we're going to understand paramedical tattooing. So typically in a body tattoo, you're looking to obviously have the art obvious and sig- signifies you know something within that regard but in paramedical tattooing it's essentially a hyper realistic tattoo and when it's done properly it should just resemble the original feature so we kind of on the one side of the spectrum with a body tattoo it's very obvious it's pronounced and then on the flip side of that paramedical tattooing is more of a invisible if you will style tattoo so in other words um in other words you may you you work on areas to make it look exactly like the skin instead of looking like a typical tattoo that it's different than the skin. Is that kind of... Yeah, exactly. And so what's the, like the typical type of clients that come uh, for your, for your services? You know that it's not gender specific, it's not age specific, it's mostly someone who's been through injury or illness and is is looking to close a chapter and camouflage something that might be a reminder of that. Would you have a lot of cancer patients? Yeah, absolutely. One of the places I originally started working before I had my own brick and mortar location was at a cancer clinic. So it was a steady diet of people going through treatment. And those procedures looked anything like doing eyebrows because they've lost them in chemotherapy or they're even through all their treatments. But because of certain drugs that they need to take after it can still inhibit hair growth. So putting those features back on to give them the confidence because they just didn't return to, you know, what we would think is normal after treatment to putting on 3D areolas after a mastectomy is super common. And I do that a lot. Even today, I work in plastic surgery, doing that on top of having my own clinic where I do that as well. So paramedical tattooing for me is a steady diet. It's probably 50% of what I do in a day. And then the other 50% is more cosmetic tattooing. So just to define that, that's more of 
we call it cosmetic because we're typically doing eyebrows, eyes, and lips and defining those features. So women don't necessarily need to be putting them on every morning. And that can come with the laundry lists of why perhaps you can't see very well to put those features on, or you weren't ever good at it. Perhaps you have alopecia and there's just absolutely no guide for you. And the idea of an eyebrow rubbing off in a day completely is very real. So there's definitely a big spectrum of, of why people do these types of services from cosmetic to more of a healing aspect. How do you um, deal with the emotion? Is there an aspect, a protocol that you have in your, in your facility? You know, people come in and obviously it's night and day after they come out of uh, of the treatment, how do you deal with that, their emotions? I think it's something I've learned over the years, how to manage that. Because when I first started back at the cancer clinic, it was a heavy, it was a heavy lift every day coming home. I can remember just being so affected emotionally crying because, you know, I had somebody in there that was my age and perhaps was terminal. So managing emotions from my aspect just came through practice and approaching it more from a standpoint of being able to give them something that's positive and not getting so emotionally involved with their struggle and putting a positive spin on it to help them. And then managing the client's emotions. I think it's, it's just something that happens naturally and it's so positive for them that I'm not ever really put in a position where I'm needing to manage negative emotions. It's more tears of joy at the end of a procedure. And you probably, I mean, the stories you get later, you actually change people's lives. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some, you know, you probably got feedback from some of your patients. What is the, what is the a couple of success stories that you've heard um, that really sticks out in your mind? Well, there's hundreds for sure, but top of mind, there's always a few that have made a really big impression on me. One was a girl who was, I think, 14 or 15, and she had a cleft lip, and her surgery looked good for sure, but it was preventing her from feeling confident in school and being able to move forward, I think, kids are mean at that age. And it was just something that really affected her to the point where she had to be put on antidepressants. And so when her mom brought her in to see me, what I was able to do was camouflage the scar still from the surgery of the cleft lip, but then re-tattoo her lip on because that's where the symmetry of the feature gets a little bit rocky from surgeries like that. And that's typically what we're dealing with all the time. And then of course, when it's on the face, it's, it's just, it's a reminder every single day you walk past a mirror, you see it. So we were able to get that feature looking back to where she felt confident. And then when I saw her a few months later, her mom had said that she was off her antidepressants and she was even modeling. So I thought that was pretty incredible wow. and what a game changer for a kid that age. Um, another one was, this is actually really common in my world is skin grafts on the face. So people are typically getting some type of cancer removed from, you know, wherever on their face, they take a skin graft from another part of their body and put that back on. Um, and then of course that skin doesn't look or resemble anything like the original skin. So it's a matter of putting skin color back in a beard back in, um, a, a freckle or freckles, whatever. But this gentleman had gone in for just a small removal of some type of malignant spot. And when he, when the, when he was done and the, the doctor handed him the mirror, his entire upper quarter of his lip was missing. And he obviously has absolutely no idea that he's about to see that in the mirror because what happens is, is they'll, they'll start cutting and they continue to cut until the margins are clean. So they're not just going to take out half of the cancer and then check with you be like, this is okay. Their job is to remove the cancer completely. So 
it's so disfiguring for him that, I mean, I, I can't even imagine the trauma myself. And I'm sure if you put yourself in that person's shoes, it's, it's pretty scary to see something like that. And they ended up taking a graft from his neck and then putting that up in that area. And so that skin is partially growing a bit of beard, but the, the beard skin ends up growing in his lip. So obviously there's no place for beard growing in your lip. So it requires a couple laser treatments to kill those follicles. And then we went in, retattooed his lip, and then I tattooed all of his beard back in. And same thing, he was off work because he just couldn't mentally deal with what that had looked like. And again, back to work and, and off medication because it is so traumatizing for these people. It's just honestly, it's a day in the life for them to typically need medication or they're off on a stress leave for work. So seeing them return back to that is, I mean, that's, that's why I do what I do. Yeah. It must be extremely rewarding to, uh, it is. to, to have that. And I'm thinking, I know you're in Calgary. We were mentioning before the show, uh, do people, do they have sites, um, in the United States as well? Are there other, or do people fly to come see you? Okay, so there are a growing number of paramedical tattoo artists globally. I teach artists online at my academy, and then those students are then able to provide those services globally. And what's so exciting about that is, you know, back in the day, paramedical tattooing was really in its infancy and it's it's gained a lot of mo- it's gained a lot of momentum over the years and so now we're seeing this being a much more common practice in fact i speak with doctors now all the time that are amazed that it's like i didn't even know this existed because once a doctor is done his work i e he got the skin cancer out well and he put the skin graft in for him, that's a total success. And medically it is, except for the fact that that person is crushed by the result. And it's a constant reminder, even though there's no skin cancer, they feel so disfigured that it's tough for them to move on. So this just gives people the ability to, to share and create more awareness and shine light on the fact that these services do exist. And, and I uh, know a little bit about your backstory, how you originally got into this. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I was a cosmetic uh, tattoo artist to start with, and I did in sync learn paramedical tattooing, which is a little bit unique, and jumped right into both of those industries combined. And so as I was mentioning, I was working in a cancer clinic and then I myself was diagnosed with thyroid cancer at a young age. And as a cancer diagnosis would be, it's, it's scary. It's traumatizing. I also felt that where I worked, it was a blessing and a curse. The curse was, is I knew too much And I had seen so many people my age just, you know, either not making it or just their journey being such a struggle and such a life changer that I felt so stressed out about what that outcome could be for me and not to minimize what that is for other people, because I know it's the same, but I guess that was the world I was living in. The blessing was, is that I had a really good supportive team around me that also knew all of those things. So fast forward, I end up getting a full thyroidectomy and I'm left with a pretty significant scar on my neck, which I didn't think I'd be as affected by from a confidence perspective. Again, cancer's gone fantastic, but I'm, I'm left with this scar that Every time I'm talking to someone, I can feel them looking at my scar and I'm wondering, what are they thinking? You know, what happened to this girl? Did she, was she in an accident? Was it self-harm? And those were really, those thoughts and those interactions were really affecting my confidence. And so I did the paramedical tattooing that I normally do on other people on my own neck. And I, I really witnessed firsthand the healing power of these types of tattoos. So you actually, you actually were able to do the procedure to yourself. 
Yeah. I mean, that's interesting. If you're just joining us, you're listening to the Common Denominator podcast. My guest is Jody Stosky, a paramedical tattoo artist and the founder of the Paramedical Tattoo Academy. Next week, I'll speak with Dan Candell, a.k.a. the Anxiety Relief Guy, which sounds like something a lot of us could use. Dan travels the world teaching people to release anxiety quickly, including through self-hypnosis. Should be a fun conversation. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Now, back to the show. What would you say um, was, sticks out in your mind, the most challenging procedure you've done? There's a lot. I think the most challenging procedures for me are people with expectations that it's going to be perfect. And that's, that's not the norm for sure, but challenging procedures come from areas that I can't make them look exactly how I want or that, for example, I had a woman come in that she was in a, an accident and a truck um, sort of mangled her leg and she had to have it amputated and had a lot of damage above on her thigh and wanted me to, you know, camouflage that and make that look better. It's just some of those cases either I can't take on or just can't help significantly. So that's more of the challenge, to be honest. I'm I'm always one to say, hey, I'd love to give this a try. But for me, the challenge is always trying to get it to look as realistic and perfect as possible. The only thing that I can't take on is when someone keloid scars, which is the type of scar that can grow and be reactivated again. It's common in darker skin types, but that would be the one time I have to say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Wow. And what would you say is the kind of the, the, the most interesting procedure that you've done just something really cool. Oh my gosh. Well, I had a girl in a car accident who had gone through the windshield. There was a fire involved. So her whole half of her face was very affected with not only burns, but she had no eyebrow left because of the burn and her eye, just all of the surgeries that she had had to go through left her eye very unsymmetrical and not matching the other so that was just a combination of a whole bunch of different procedures from tattooing her eyebrow back on to match her other eyebrow and doing kind of a smoke and mirrors effect of creating the illusion that the eye that was affected looked bigger so that it matched the other eye and then working on the skin texture and color of the area that had been affected. And and what would like a procedure like that, how, I mean, would that be hours and hours of work? I mean, to think about, like, I think of like, you know, you got to come up with a plan and then, I mean, what does that actually look like? You know, you, you map it out on a piece of paper and, and you're like, okay, I'm going to do this, you know? My process is having a conversation with the client about first off their expectations. And then second of all, me sharing what I think is what I can do to help, and then the order of operations after that. And it, it could be anywhere from a 15-minute procedure to a two-hour procedure, just depending on what I'm taking on. But it's multiple treatments most of the time because when you're adding and creating skin color to an area, it's not that you can just pick one ink color and then just tattoo it in like you would do in a body tattoo. It has to be diluted you have to layer multiple colors in on different appointments to create the illusion of what skin looks like. There's a transparency to it and to create that so that it fools people to look like skin requires multiple treatments. It's usually not a one and done type of case. Well, and the, uh, I know you mentioned before, uh, which I think that's, that's really rewarding as, as well is to start an academy teaching other people to do what to do what you know to do. I and mean, how is that and you said you're doing you were doing it online. Um, you find that that's effective. You're able to get, you know, good teachers and and people graduating the academy and how's that process for you? Well, it was 
(laughs) when I decided to do this online, it was overwhelming and it was definitely a big baby to birth because I wanted to communicate the best ways to do this and not have students make the same mistakes I did and really shorten the learning curve for them. But my courses require a tattoo artist that already has a year of machine experience. So I'm not just plucking someone off the street saying, Hey, do you want to learn how to do this? They already need to have existing experience. And the courses that I've put together, I hear time and time again, that they've learned so much more in my courses than they have learned in person, which is such an amazing feeling to know that what I wanted to do is being achieved. And we just celebrated our three-year anniversary, and I have over 3,000 students in 42 different countries. That's amazing. In three years, that's, that's tremendous. And I also know, I guess maybe that's more in person. You also have a clinic, right? It's called Cinnamon Girl Tattoo, um, I guess in Calgary, right? So people, yeah. uh, and how is that running a clinic as well? It's busy. I mean, we're, we're a small group of people that are big on purpose. And I have four different artists that work for me. And then we have a behind the scenes team of admin and marketing. Recently, well, like three years ago now, my husband quit his oil and gas job and joined me to run the two different businesses. So Cinnamon Girl Clinic and the Academy, because as things were growing, it was just becoming way too much for the people that I had to manage everything and keep it running smoothly. And if I wanted to deliver a certain kind of of product and experience, I was just starting to to be drowning in that. And and I could see and feel that slipping away. So I think now I have it nailed down pretty tight. It's definitely busy, but having the support of my husband and us working as a team together has been amazing. I thought at first, oh my God, am I opening the big can of worms and we're going to end up in a divorce, but it's actually been incredible. Yeah. It's uh, my wife and I, we actually work together and it's uh, the beginning was a challenge to figure out which roles and responsibilities yeah. uh, each of us do, but um, but over time it, it it makes a lot of sense. It does. It does. It has the ability to, to be a compounding effect in a good way. So yeah. Uh, and what would you say is something um, that you're grateful for? I'm grateful to have the ability and the skills to teach people how to do this and have found what I'm passionate about, and then was able to deliver that. I think a lot of people struggle with, you know, what's my purpose? And, you know, I want to be helping people and giving back. And I'm, I'm really, really grateful to have found that because I know that's a struggle for a lot of people and it can leave a little bit of an emptiness. And I'm, I'm fortunate to have found that. It's really amazing. And, um, and just, Again, it could be a range of anything. Uh, What is something about yourself that people don't know? Uh, hmm. Something, I guess, I feel like I'm an open book and people probably, and especially with social media, they definitely have a bird's eye view into your life. But aside things about me, I love to play different sports. I love to laugh and have a good time. And I'm very laid back, probably to a fault. And the polar opposite of that is my husband, who is very rule abiding. So I'm I'm very different in that in that case, I guess. So you need that. You need that balance for sure in a, yeah. in a healthy relationship. And I really this has really been eye-opening. It's really great and appreciative the work that you're doing, uh, healing people in a meaningful way. So thank you for that. How can people find out more about yourself, about your academy, about the clinic, uh, and follow you on social? Yeah, absolutely. There's two ways to find me. The first one, if you're interested in paramedical, is to, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at Jody Stosky. And if you are wanting to follow me in Calgary and see what kind of work we get up to there, it's Cinnamon Girl Clinic. 
Well, thank you so much, Jody. It's really uh, been beautiful. Thank you. Thank, thank you. So you. Much. Hope you enjoyed my conversation with Jody. Next week, I'll speak with Dan Candell. Dan's known as the anxiety relief guy, and for good reason. He travels the world teaching people how to relax quickly. If you'd like your blood pressure to come down on demand and might even be open to self-hypnosis, make sure to tune in. Please subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode and follow me on social media at mpopak. Have a great day and I'll talk to you again soon.